Good evening. Again, this is your brother, Bishop Hilario Bibelen, and we are now going to continue our subject, and that is hermeneutics. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful this evening that we are here again one more time to study your word. Use us to be the channel of your blessing and share your word to us, Lord, as we listen to the voice of your servant. Bless us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, we uh, tackle about uh, the role of the prophet during our last meeting. But I'm asking your, uh, I'm asking an apology. It is because uh, I have no time for the past weeks. It is because I was accepted by Centro Scholar University as professor, and we have a lot of meetings and and seminars about how to teach in Centro Scholar University. And praise the Lord, we have again. God gave us again at another time to continue our subject this evening. Again, um, let's talk about let's talk about poetry. As we talked last uh, previous weeks about the role of the prophet. Now, we have to check it out that the scriptures, if you will check the different writings of the scripture, and then here we will understand how to interpret rightly the word of the Lord. Now, what is poetry? Poetry has its own way of reaching into the hearts and minds of men. No formal list of principles, no careful analysis of the mechanics involved in poetry can tell why it impresses so deeply. Yet some analysis must be provided, especially of Old Testament poetry. The New Testament contains some poetry, for example, the song on the book of Revelation. And some of the sayings of the Lord Jesus Christ may have been cast into poetic form, but the bulk of the poetry of the Bible is in Hebrew. It is to this kind of poetry that we turn our attention. Let's talk about the extent of poetry. Let's talk about the poetic form. Although form is essential for the Paul epic of poetry, translations made for extensive distribution and for ease of reading and cannot point up all pictures of Hebrew poetry. Now, let's talk about the parallelism and stress units. We will define that. In many languages, both ancient and modern poetry consists in a balance of sound. For example, in phonetic rhyme. The poet follows one assertion by other line of thought parallel to the first. A verse then consists of at least two parts in which the second part is parallel to the first. So you have to understand that when we talk about a poem, even in a song, we have we will check the rhyme of the sentences in a song or in a poem. Okay? Parallelism in one of the main features of Hebrew poetry. Okay, so you have to check it out. 
two lines, that is the stitch, usually constitute a verse. But there are three lines, three stitch, verses. Four line is trestatis, verses, and even five lines, that is pentatis, verses. So in the last two types, the interpreter must be sure that what looks like a four line verse is not actual two line verse and that a five line is not in reality a distance and a tristance. Okay, so we have to check it out. The so-called parallelism. Okay, now you know, um, well, well, uh, there, now there are songs that, uh, especially today, uh, when we talk about the songs of the unbelieving world, the secular type of songs, sometimes it is not good and sometimes there is no such thing as parallelism. Now, uh, uh, we have the so-called, uh, okay, incomplete parallelism, okay? And then we have also the stanzas, or the troops or stropes. Check the word of order and arrangement of words. You have to check that in a poetry. Now, in the uh, personal dimension of poetry, uh, you have to check it. Uh, you know, if you are reading the writings or if we are reading a poet, uh, a poet or a poetry, we have to see beyond the lines. We have to see something. We will see the object behind that word. Okay? And the, uh, that, that is a poetic imagery. And then the essential factors influencing meaning in poetry. Okay? So if you are reading the books of the prophets, no, they are just using uh, symbols to portray and to convey a meaning of their word, of their message that being uh, that 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 uh, word that they wants to portray and say to the hearers. Okay. Now, uh, let's talk about. Okay. So I hope I hope that. Uh, well, the good thing today is this, brothers and sisters. You can download or you can down yeah, yes, you can download some applications of of the internet so that uh, you can study easily the scripture. Okay? I hope you can um uh you can download the well, I have uh, a lot of things in my uh, <clears throat> in my uh, cell phone and in my laptop. You can download the My Sword. You can download the Hebrew Hebrew Greek interlinear, interlinear Bible. You can uh, download also the English uh, Greek Bible. Um, and other um, application in order for you to easily study the written word of the Lord. Okay, our aim, don't forget this, our aim always when we are preaching the word is to show something, is to tell something about the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, our message is about salvation. Our message is how sinners to be saved. How the unbelieving people turn into the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So let's talk about a special um, hermeneutics. Now, uh, the ascertaining of those principles which apply to 
literary segment refers to those roles which are developed with reference to special parts of the scripture. Okay, so again, we have uh, okay, we have the example, we have the prophecy, we have the parables. The Lord used a lot of parables in the New Testament. We have the Apocalypse. When you say Apocalypse, not only the book of Revelation, even the book of Daniel, even the book of Isaiah, there you can see the Apocalypse there. Okay? We have the poetry. Now, in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, we have the so-called narrative. We have the law. When we say law, that those books that were written by Moses, the five books. We have the typology. We have the poetry and we have the wisdom literature. Under the New Testament, we have the gospel. There are four gospels in the uh, New Testament. We have the parable that was being used by the Lord Jesus Christ. We have the epistle or letter. When we say epistle, you have to start from the book of Romans up to the book of Jude. And then we have the revelation. So, so, so we have to see it clearly. It's a big difference between a narrative. Uh, you, narrative is, is a story. So you must know how to read between the plot. Kailangan maunawaan po natin yung plot. Paano ba yung sequence? Yung pagpalit ng eksena. We have to understand that. For example, for example of the narrative, when the angels visited Mary and Joseph in the house, uh, uh, no, I'm, uh, no, no, I mean, yes, in the, uh, in Bethlehem, they saw the baby Jesus lying in a manger. You see, the baby Jesus. And then, it, while reading and seeing in the narrative of the scripture, of that story, here comes the wise man. The wise man. And the Bible said, if you, uh, if you have to try, if you are analyzing the scripture, that the, the wise man, they read in the scripture that today the Savior has been born. Okay? And that's why they went in Jerusalem, they went in Bethlehem, they went in in uh, in Judea, they went in uh, Israel to see where is the Savior, where is the, the King. Okay? You see, the, when, okay, the angels, uh, no, uh, okay, and then, Okay, the angels when they, the angels when, uh, it is because the shepherd. Okay, come again. The shepherd who are shepherding their sheep, their their sheep. Uh, 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 while doing this, here comes the bus of angels, and they said something to them, and these shepherds went to. Uh, the place where the Lord Jesus Christ was born, and they saw the baby in a manger. Okay, come again. They see the baby in a manger, but while the wise men, they did not see the baby in the manger, but they see him inside the house or in the house. Now, now check uh, again. You have to check the plot. How many days, how many months, and how many years? So if we will go back, the shepherds who saw the angels and see the baby Jesus, that is different day, that is different uh, date. Because the wise men, they meet the baby, it's no longer a baby. 
Okay? It's already two years old. So you see? So must understand how to um, interpret narrative. Okay? And check also about check also about the word that being used in the scripture. So you have to study also you have to research and study also the word. What is the meaning of the word? Okay? So you have to check it out. Uh, uh, now, before when we say Sabbath, because you and I, especially uh, the evangelicals, we are using the Lord's Day instead of Sabbath. So you can see in the screen the scripture so that uh, we will uh, maximize the time. The word tithes. You have to understand what is the meaning of tithes. You have to research. You have to check the meaning of the word tithes or tithing. According to Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. The word in the beginning. The, uh, now, if you will read in the, the phrase in the beginning, from the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and you will read also from from John chapter 1 verse 1 check the the connotation of the word or the phrase in the beginning okay in our image after our likeness so we have to understand that sometimes we are telling that my face is the face of Jesus Christ. My hand is the hand of Jesus Christ. We have to be clarified that we are not talking about physical image. We are not talking about, uh, you know, we are talking about spiritual things. We are talking about something that is very hard to comprehend by the human faculty. So we have to check that. So we have to understand, study the word. So okay, come again, we have to study the word. The word rest. What is the meaning of rest in Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 to 3? Okay? What is the meaning of hardened Pharaoh's heart? According to Exodus. What is circumcision? What is covenant? So you have to check it. The Christ, the essence of life. When 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 the writer used the word bread, water, wine, what is the meaning? Come again, my point is this. You have to study the word. You have to study the word. What's the meaning of yoke? The meaning of baptism? What is more faith? What is needle? What is repent? You know, uh, the... The word says like this. It is easier for a camel no, to enter into the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. So you have to check what is the meaning of a needle. What is this needle? You know, in order for you and I to understand clearly Number one, who is the author? Understand who is the author. Who are the recipients? Okay, the location. The situation. So you have to check that. Okay, we have to check that. The word repent. You see, so, you, so we have to check that, please. Uh, it's very important to study the meaning of words. Now, there are seven key for studying the Bible. Of course, we are doing this. We have to pray. We have to, while reading the context, we have to explore the context. We have to select a text. Okay, so I put it here. The uh, three uh, column, we have the length of text, the immediate context, and the next larger context. Okay, so you have to check it out. Uh, when you say shorter than a paragraph, and the other one is the paragraph, the third the third is the next larger context is the topic 
or the chapter. Okay, so the big difference between a stanza, a text, a verse, a paragraph. Okay, so we have to check it in order for us to understand the meaning of a text. Again, brothers and sisters, this evening, uh, this evening, if you are reading a text, always read the previous text and the up the the text after that text or verses. So at least you are reading the whole context. It's very hard to understand a verse without reading the previous and the uh, later verse. Okay. Read at least the immediate context and summarize the author's message. Write that summary. If you are doing a more careful study of the context, write your own observation about the following. What was the historical setting of the author and first readers? So you have to check it, please. This historical setting. Who is the author? Who are those first reader? The recipient. Okay. What kind of literature? So you have to check the literature. Is it poetry? Is it prophecy? Is it letter? Is it uh, history? Description? Story? Teaching? A parable? And others. You have to check it. List any references to the culture that may affect the meaning of the text. You have to check it out. What was the author's purpose? Ano ba yung intention ng author? Bakit na sinulat yun? What ideas did the author emphasize? Ano yung gusto niyang bigyan ng diin? Summarize the author's message in at least the immediate context. So, at again, while reading the text or a certain or a portion of the scripture, you have to check this. Check this, okay? Uh, third, you have to investigate the context. Write your observations and answers the questions. Who, what, when, where, why, how. You have to answer the the five W. We call that determine the intended meaning of the scripture, the intended meaning of the word. According to the context, what did the author intend the text to communicate to the first reader? Hmm? Check natin ano bang ibig sabihin ng author doon sa Bumabasa. You know, it's like uh, you are uh, writing a text and you are sending that text to the recipient. For example, you are writing a text to your mother. Kailangan, you have to use the language between a mother and a son or a daughter. You, you are not going to use a word that is being used, you are using to your wife or to your husband as different. Pip, you have to harmonize your understanding with the Bible. What other Bible texts say something about your text or topic? List the references and summarize what they say according to their context. How should you understand the text? Or, I'm sorry, the text or topic so that the meaning of the text remains faithful to the meaning in its own context and does not contradict other Bible texts. How should you understand the text or topic in light of the clear teaching of the whole Bible and especially that of the New Testament? Write any questions that you did not have time to answer 
or are not able to answer, then later on you will uh, reset. Okay? Uh, and then compare with other scholars. Read the books of other writers. Okay? Read the... Uh, Read other uh, books. For example, if you are reading the book of Matthew, you check also the book of Luke, Luke of, uh, the book of Mark and John. It is because we can see the parallelism or the parallel verse of the other texts. What did you learn about your text for other books or people? According to the context, what did the author intend to text the, to, to communicate to the first readers? How should you understand the text so that the meaning of the text remains faithful in its context and does not contradict the teaching of other Bible texts? How should you understand the text in light of the clear teaching of the whole Bible? So you have to check that. So again, uh, and then, lastly, apply God's word into our lives. Apply the word of God into our lives. What does this text mean to us today? How can I apply this text in my life? What do you want me to do today? What will I do? When will I do it? Where will I do it? And the last, how will I do it? So we have to apply the written word to our lives, to our life, okay? In order for us to see the power of the written word. Again, brothers and sisters, you have to study what kind of literature the text that you are reading. Okay, again, brothers and sisters, I hope this uh, simple lecture this evening will help us to understand and help us to interpret this written scripture in order for you and I to be used mightily by the Lord in his vineyard. Our aim is to glorify, of course, the Lord. And our aim is to share the word of the Lord to the people, especially those who do not have the relationship. Again, brothers and sisters, I'm so thankful for lending me your ears, for uh, listening to this uh, simple uh, lecture this evening, hoping that we will continue our study because why we're studying according to the scripture in order for you and I to be approved by the Lord in whom we are serving. We are serving the Lord. We are not here to be boastful. We are just here as servant willing to go and share his word. Why we're studying in order for us to give and share the correct message of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful this evening. Bless us. Bless especially those who uh, gave their time to listen to this word this evening. Bless us. And bless this program, especially the leaders of this program. Thank you. And I'm praying for Dr. Fred Bungato, who is the one leading this channel. Bless him, Lord. Supply everything that he needs in his life. In his ministry. Thank you, Father, because this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters.